The cost of living crisis is already impacting millions of us, but new research warns that over 250,000 households in the UK will, quotes, slide into destitution as they struggle to cope with rising bills. That's the view of the National Institute for Economic and Social Research. They estimate 1.5 million of us will struggle to pay for food and energy over the next year unless government steps in to help the most vulnerable. The National Institute wants ministers to raise universal credit by £25 a week and grant the poorest 40% of households a one-off cash payment of £250. Well, I'm delighted to welcome Dr Jajit Chadder, who runs the National Institute of Economic and Social Research, one of our most respected think tanks. Professor Chadder, great to have you with us. There must be quite a strong feeling within you. your research body, which is a very, very influential one, uh, at the heart of Westminster to make these recommendations in the public way that you have. Thank you, Liam, and always a pleasure to come back and talk to you, um, particularly on the back of the analysis we've just done. Let me first apologise for the quality of the sound. I'm in, I'm in meetings that, for which the reception is very poor, and I've managed to come up um, uh, into another room to, to talk to you, but the, the reception is not great, so we may lose contact during the conversation. Absolutely. We're terribly concerned about the impact of the increase in inflation and the extent to which that is making it very hard for households at the bottom of the income distribution potentially to be paying their household bills this year, both for fuel and for food. Let us be clear, it's actually these households who've also suffered the most in the last couple of years because of COVID. They've generally been more precarious jobs and also uh, working in areas that have been supporting the rest of us, health, or social care, or in transport, as I've just been from your previous speaker. And it's incredibly important that on equity grounds that they don't suffer inordinately this year. And we found the spring statement was nowhere near as helpful as it ought to have been. And that's why we started to work after that to try and understand what could be done. And the two things I want to make. Firstly, even if we respect the arbitrary fiscal rules that the Chancellor feels he was bound by, there is significant space to do more for these households. At least £10 billion pounds is available. You don't have to believe our figures. They're the ones published by the OBR uh, at the time of the spring statement. And in fact, there's even more money available than that. And now there's a secondary question, which is actually more important. The Chancellor or the person running the economy in this country should not be bound by arbitrary rules. It's incredibly important when things come along to change the structure of the economy, whether it's Brexit, which is an opportunity to build trade with other parts of the world, or it's the shock of COVID, or it's the tragic events that we're seeing in Ukraine. In, governments must stand up in a responsible manner and help people deal with it. These events are not the fault of the people who are suffering. Therefore, it's not only a matter of equity, it's also actually helping people um, deal, um, to just have more stability in their lives. We know all how we will deal with instability. It's going to lead to other types of social tensions and problems that can be avoided if the government acted in a more responsible manner. And that's why we've really been very careful with our analysis to come up with the kind of uh, suggestions that we have in place today. We think the cost of this would be somewhere between four and five billion. It's in no way threatening the overall fiscal position, but it would enable those very households to deal with the bills that they're going to face over the spring and the summer into the autumn. And we can't wait. We can't just hang around and wait till November. Sorry, Liam. That's the we should just explain, Jajit, what you and I know well, what the National Institute is. You are funded largely by what's called the ESRC, the Economic and Social Research Council. That is, you know, taxpayers' money that is allocated, goes through, you know, yep. expert opinion. You are completely non-aligned. You are completely yes. non-political. That's what the National Institute yes. is. And it strikes me that... When you say that there is a bit of money knocking around, because the government, as prices go up, particularly fuel prices, the government's getting a lot more money from fuel duty, for instance. I mean, why do you think Rishi Sunak is being this way? He's being screamed at by many of his own backbenchers to start using some of this cash to help the most hard-pressed households up and down the country, the kind of households that your very, very careful research has identified. Yeah. I, I, I can't answer the, or be very clear about the kind of political tactics that a politician may have in his mind. That's a question for the politician and his conscience. What, what's clear to us is looking at the economy is that something has to be done. 
Now, it could very well be that in the Treasury, there's a sense in which the fiscal rules have to be followed. And there's also, whenever you have a target, maybe you want to beat it. So if you have a view that debt has to come down by the end of the Parliament, if you have this extra boon through higher inflation, meaning higher taxes are coming in, you may decide to say, well, you know what? I can hit the target even earlier. But that target, as I've been saying for several years now, and you and I have had conversations along those lines, doesn't necessarily support well-being of people across the country. So it doesn't make sense to hit a target even earlier if it's damaging the prospects of people across the country. And the key point is this, Liam, it's not everyone particularly. During COVID, the household sector in the UK increased its saving by £200 billion. Mm. Let me tell you now, they, that was not driven by the people at the bottom of the income distribution. Mm. It was not driven by the kind of people we're trying to help here today. Actually, it was often driven by people like you and I, who were very lucky to have secure jobs that allows us to continue to have income coming in no matter what goes on. We're talking about people in a more precarious situation in their lives for whom responsible government dictates more intervention and now than we're seeing.